Hello, I'm at Shoot Talk. Welcome back to you, Doug. How are you feeling? Not right. No. We're a little bit flu going around, I think. But, hey, you haven't got the COVID, though. I don't think so, no. We've had to drag you out of bed, haven't we? To do Tube Talk. Yeah. Just in case Mr McKinley, anyone's watching, he is genuinely ill. Yeah. And I have, as a bad parent, dragged him out of bed to do this. But otherwise, you don't get paid. It's true. What's been happening? Well... Firstly, we also wanted to say hello to someone else, like we did last week. Yeah. We want to say hello to Judith King. Hi, Judith. Good to chat this week. Always has very good name excuses for the horses. Good research. So we got in trouble last week when we said that Jared was the best of the Gillespie brothers, undisputed, mm. and uh, Dizzy Gillespie rang me on Friday morning, very unhappy. Some of the bad books with him. Mm. Can't be in the good book for all the time. It's true. And then, in other news, we also bought a horse for Joseph O'Brien. Yeah, so we talked about Joseph last week and bought a horse with him. French Breeze Up Sales. Mm. Lope de Vega Colt out of the States, full mare, fantastic pedigree out of Galileo mare. Really popular, filled very quickly, lots of people interested. So, we we're always going to buy a couple of horses with him. Um, and we are going to be buying a second one with him uh, <laughs> ne- next Maisie next month. Yeah. So yeah, next month. So that's pretty. That's pretty cool. So if you're interested, we've already got a lot of people who are, uh, who are very interested. Let me know. We'll put you on the list. Yeah. Moving on to last week, didn't have any winners. We had some good performances, didn't we? Yeah, and we didn't really expect too many winners because of lots of horses fresh up and wide draws and things. But the good performances were a tissue who was a good third in the Stone Cup. Fantastic third, jumped well, trapped wide the whole way, storm time, a better draw she would have won. She's back and she's heading to a half million dollar race on the 4th of June in Brisbane. Uh, Calissa didn't went under by a nose at Matter Matter on Friday. Yeah, blinkers on, went way, way better, up to a mile. Starting to find her rhythm now. She was beaten by like a short half head, one more stride, she would have won. So she's, yeah, she's she's building nicely. Mm. On Sunday, Darcy's flight was a good second at Randwick. No, she wasn't. Oh, no. She was a good second in Chicago. She was, and Loom to win just peaked, probably just, she'd had a number of weeks between runs that probably just cost her the win. Um, but a lovely race for a next up. Uh, a race for the Pearl Bonus, Phillies and Mears 1200 metres, mm. ideal for her. We very mm. hard to beat. And then at Rand and then at Randwick, a good third on Wednesday by Duke of Gordon. Yeah, he backed up two wins, went to Randwick, they ran very fast the first thousand, he used up a lot of gas. Everything on the pace stopped except for him, he fought on off third. He's a real become a really progressive horse. He'll go to Canterbury, step up to nineteen hundred metres in three weeks' time. Be hard to beat. Uh, he's got a really bright future. Mm. Moving on to this week, on Saturday at Tarapa, race 5, we have Raggedy Doll. Fresh up, um, barrier 4, Crystal Lindsay on board, only 50 kilos, 1300 metres is way too short. She needs another fire scratchings to make the field, but she's a chance of making it. Uh, she's a stayer, it's too short, no real expectations, but I wouldn't be surprised to see her throw a lot of cheek for a long time, but not really expecting her to put the hoof in the till on Saturday. At Rosal race six, we have Should Lee. Yeah, we looked at uh, Rosal for him, and also we looked at Melbourne, but uh, Rosal, um, he drew a barrier 18 down at Flemington, so he runs here. Big weight to carry, 61 kilos, awkward draw. He's going really, really well. He'll run well, he'll hit the line hard. Just makes it tough from the draw for him with that big weight, um, but he'll run well. Mm. And then at Flemington Race 8, we have Skyman and Wairau Falls. Yeah, who drew uh, Barrier 15 of 15 and 14 of 15. So we had no luck with Barrier draws this week. Skyman, it was a winning run last start, but been by the Barrier draw, had to come from last. Um, similar this week, except it's Flemington, not Caulfield, so you can, it's easy to come from the back. If he gets the right run in transit, he'll be awfully hard to beat. He can win this. Um, just need to get the right run in, run in transit and hopefully a strong tempo. Worry Falls, unlucky last start, never got clear in the same race as Skyman. He's got an awkward draw. Um, he certainly can be right on the finish too, but same thing, he's just going to get the right run in transit. 
Um, he usually jumps quite well, so if we could slot in midfield, it would be good. He's also an each way chance, but they're both going to need luck with their draws. Mm. And then on Sunday at Harara race two, we have Silky Red Fox. Yeah, so he's he's kind of on his last. He is on his last chance. He needs to show something. The last couple of runs haven't been bad. He's been caught in the wrong part of the track, and he's been okay. He gets he gets a wetter track on Sunday. Should do it. Should suit him better. With Jonathan Riddell on board. Nice barrier draw. He's got a lot of things in his favour. You'd expect to see him running in the first three or four. And then race five, make time. Yeah, ignore his, uh, his form. It's zero, zero, zero. Ignore that. Put a line through it. Don't worry about that. He's come back really well. Uh, terrible barrier draw, drawn out wide. Um, but it will be wet. He goes well fresh. He's got a big weight. So it appears to be lots of things against him. But I tell you what, I reckon he'll run a boomer at big odds. I would certainly, on Sunday, be having a few dollars each way on him. He goes well fresh and he's come back well. Mm. Now we move on to bit of the week, and um, we've had a special request this bit of the week, don't, haven't we, Dad? Yeah, we have. What's the request, been? Well, they would have won from both of us to see who's the true champion of bit of the week. Yeah, because you've been going downhill like that. When's the last time you won one? Well, you haven't even picked one. All right, let's go. So for oh, my Donkey Kong. For your bit of the week, you've picked at Trentham Race A Z Falls. I have. Mm-hmm. In the stakes race, um... She was very good in a very similar race last month, uh, storming home for a placing. Uh, Stephen Marsh has kept her fresh. She handles weak tracks. Um, hard 1,600 metres will suit because she gets further than that. I think at $5.50, she's over the odds. So I think she's a great bet. Z Falls is my bit of the week. And my bit of the week at Flemington Race 5 is Scissor Step. Yeah. Um, and that, as you pointed out, five starts the distance for three wins and two placings. He's paying $13. Um, he's got a big weight to carry, but it doesn't matter as much over 1100. And he's got wet track form. He hasn't run on the heavy track, but he's won the slow. So at those odds, he looks he looks way, way over. And you never want to go for the favourite either because they choke under pressure. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. All right, mate. So that's my bit of the week, and that's your bit of the week, and that concludes Tube Talk. It does. Tidy Tube Talk. Thanks, mate. We'll see you by next week. Bye. Bye. The lead as they arrive into the final furlong, Sandon is coming after him. Epicenter and Sandon, these two strive for stride. Simplification down the outside is next. They're coming down to the wire. Epicenter, Sandon, Rich strike is coming up on the inside. Oh, my goodness. The longest shot has won the Kentucky Derby.